Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Dave Shuttleworth, continuing our conversation with the three new councillors elect who will take their seats at City Hall on December the 1st. Talking about the major issues, uh, Judy Partridge and uh, Jason Farr and Brenda Johnson. Let's move on to Aerotropolis. Judy, where do we stand on Aerotropolis? Well, I agree with the phased-in approach. We do need to bring new business to, uh, to Hamilton. We do not have a lot of uh, employment-ready land. So I do agree with the expansion of the Aerotropolis. Uh, I, I would like to see it phased in, though. We do have a lot of agricultural land up there that uh, we do need to protect. Um, and, and I'd also like to tie in the mid-pen as well, because the, uh, the whole decision made by the province, it's in the draft form right now of the mid-pen expansion on the QE, um, you know, I think, I think that uh, th that's going to help, uh, or sorry, hinder as opposed to help the expansion of the Aerotropolis and connecting that trade route down to the U.S. That's interesting because the, the mid-pen conversation seemed to have disappeared for some time and then it, it came up again during this past uh, mm -hmm. election. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Jason, uh, Aerotropolis. Well, we desperately need good jobs in Hamilton and if the study proves to be true, a phased-in approach with Aerotropolis will bring just that. I'm uh, frustrated like many other Hamiltonians who happen to drive by Wayne Gretzky Parkway in Brantford and look at, to me, uh, what I see is uh, many missed opportunities. A lot of yes. major industries want to, if they do indeed, want to uh, locate in the, uh, the airport lands in Aerotropolis, then uh, we need to welcome them. We need jobs. Bad. Brent, Brenda Johnson, Ward 11, uh, your feelings on, uh, on Aerotropolis? Well, thank goodness that they, the council did vote to phase it in, uh, but my concern is why aren't businesses coming to Hamilton? Is it because of high taxes? Is it because of our image? Uh, it, it certainly isn't because we don't have serviceable uh, employment lands. The Glanbrook, or the, the, yeah, the Glanbrook Industrial Park has been sitting empty forever. We just finally got uh, 25 acres of it uh, used up by Canada Bread. So I would think, why aren't we looking at why businesses aren't coming here? Is it because we've put up too many roadblocks and should we not making it more accessible for them to, uh, to go through the bureaucracy of, of City Hall? Um, I th I'm glad that, the, like I said, that they are doing it as a phased-in project. And um, we'll stay with you right now for uh, uh, light rail transit. It was a big project for uh, outgoing Mayor Fred Eisenberger. Where do you stand, Brenda, on light rail? I think light rail tra uh, I think that would be a wonderful project to, to uh, have in Hamilton. I think it would be a great way to get people to commute back and forth from their homes to their businesses. Uh, but I think that we also need to support the HSR because without having the, the support and have a, an efficient, convenient uh, and affordable uh, public transit to support it, then the LRT is not going to be sustainable. Uh, Jason, light rail transit, and the other issue is northwest or east south, or north east west, north south, <laughs> say east west, <laughs> blah blah blah. East west first, that'd be the B line, I believe, and then yeah. the A line is the the T that comes down uh, from James Street. No, I, I love the LRT idea. I do, however, feel we need to invest in all day go transit from Hamilton to Toronto and uh, back again, obviously, first. Uh, it's all about bringing uh, commuter living to this town, bringing the real estate values up along those LRT routes. Uh, it's considered sexy, let's face it, the uh, light rail transit, and uh, uh, it's proven to be effective in that capacity in other large markets across North America. I think it's great, but let's go with the all-day go first. Judy Partridge, Ward 15, and uh, light rail transit. Yes, definitely. I support light rail transit. I'm going to come back to the mid-pen, though, because the other part of that is that they want to put a mid-pen highway right through rural Flamborough, cut it across the top of the Burlington Escarpment, tie into the 407. So effectively you're tying the 403 into the 407 between Brantford and Burlington. And I think uh, there needs to be more attention paid to rail transit. That includes light rail transit. The GO service needs to be expanded. We need to have all day service in Hamilton. I think you would see people using uh, more um, uh, transit if it was light rail, it tends to be seen, as Jason said, as a little bit sexier and uh, appeals to um, uh, higher end educated uh, people who are moving between the urban centers for their jobs. So I support it 100%. And I'd also like to see improved transit come into Waterdown. We do not have a direct link between Waterdown and Hamilton uh, in the transit service. Uh, one of the biggest issues uh, on the campaign trail and has been for many elections, poverty. Let's start with you, Jason Farr. What's council going to do about poverty? Well, it's a symptom of so many other things. It's, uh, it's a tough one to tackle, particularly in Ward 2, Ward 3, Ward 4. Uh, in the inner city, it's something I grew up with and something that I understand uh, all too well. 
Uh, I had some feelings on the campaign trail with regards to poverty, uh, Dave, in terms of um, less concentrated. If it's all around you, it's all you know. And I think it's something that needs to be shared. It's, it's something that needs to be looked at by the city as a whole. But there are so many more reasons for poverty than, you know, and than all of us know. And it's to tackle that problem first, to try to figure out uh, what it is exactly we need to work on. Uh, before we can go any further with the issue, but it is a big one. It's Brenda a huge Johnson, concern. Brenda uh, Johnson, moving on to you, poverty. How are we tackling it this time around? Well, I know that Jason just talked about those particular wards, and Ward 11 is not historically known for um, poverty rates, but the face of poverty is changing. Uh, we have plant closures, and we have seniors living in their own homes with fixed incomes, and, and even though they have fixed incomes, their bills are not fixed. They keep rising. Uh, with the HST now being added on to essential bills, they're rising even higher than ever. I attended the uh, Roundtable Poverty um, uh, workshop that they had for the candidates to come to, and I went there to see if there was any programs that I could help the, the seniors and uh, the people that are facing poverty in Ward 11. And, and Jason's right, we, knew, we do need to because poverty that affects any of our residents affects all our residents. Uh, uh, Judy, I'm going to have to end with you on this one. So uh, how are we tackling poverty? Well, I don't think we're doing enough. Uh, poverty is, is one of those issues, and I agree with both Brenda and Jason, that is, you know, it's a, a multifaceted, complex issue. But some of the bigger issues we have are connected to poverty, our affordable housing. We do not have enough affordable housing in Hamilton. We don't have enough transitional housing. And, and as the numbers increase on the waiting lists, we have, uh, believe it or not, in Waterdown, we have pockets of poverty starting to show up in uh, Flamborough in the last 10 years. They're particularly growing in Waterdown and in the Frealton area. And we have a five-year waiting list right now for affordable housing. What we are lacking significantly in is transitional housing. And uh, that is certainly going to be high on my agenda. And, uh, and again, tying in with, uh, with women's uh, issues, domestic uh, assault, domestic ab abuse. We've just opened a Flamborough Women's Resource Centre in partnership with Interval House in Waterdown and it is the very first rural outreach program yeah. uh, to help women and their families dealing with family crisis and the number one issue is affordable housing and transitional housing and, and I'm we gonna are have sadly to end with you. thank I'm you. I'm going to have to end with you on that one. Thank yes. you all three of you. We look forward to four years uh, with uh, you and uh, the relationship here with Cable 14. Congratulations. Yeah. Judy Partridge, Jason Farr, Brenda Johnson, three new councillors at City you. Hall. Coming up, it's news and notes.